You're listening to the Kung Fu Podcast presented by James Still. I don't care if he's Muhammad, Imad, Bruce Lee. And Steve Newby. This is the original Five Fingers of Death right here. But my hands are registered as lethal weapons. That means we get into a fight, I accidentally kill you, I go to jail. Record. We're going. Oh, you went into the red then, James. Did I? I, I shouldn't because I'm in. Uh... Well, maybe it's because you were shouting. Probably. I think so. Maybe I'm in a good mood because we're on yeah. pod 20. Pod 20, let's celebrate. I, I don't know why. we. <laughs> I well, think we should celebrate with a bit of Kung Fu instead of just talking about myself all the time. All right, then. Maybe we yeah. should. That's therapy. It's therapy. It's good. Well, that was therapy the other day. I just felt like it. But you do see. I mean, it. It is. It does open your eyes when you look at things in mm. uh, that kind of perspective, the situation and whatever. Well, oh well. But, um, um, I kept it. I kept it to myself for twelve years, or is, or is it twelve years to ten years? Yeah, yeah, eight to ten years. So, <laughs> well, all two, all two of our listeners are probably thinking should should have, should have hung on a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. cool. um right guys welcome to podcast 20 yes 20 20 episodes god knows how many hours accumulated of us talking absolute crap but oh we will we'd just like to thank you for sticking around that means it uh, means so much to us my name's james still and i'm joined with uh, my teacher of many years mr steve newby all the way from canada how are you doing steve I'm great, thank great. you. Great, yes, very well, good. That was my Canadian accent. Was it? About? I, I'm still learning how to call a path or a pavement a sidewalk. <laughs> Bloody zebra crossings, crosswalks. Oh, well. Stuff like that. Okay, all right. And a bum bag is a is a it's fanny, a fanny pack. pack. Yeah, but they, but they died like you know. 25 years ago don't you know well yeah luckily are you still wearing one are you still rocking one <laughs> we've got one in the drawers <laughs> oh brilliant brilliant yeah. okay um right let's just get straight into it because I, I i've um i want to talk about oh do you know what i was gonna get straight into it but it occurred to me the other day that you're like friggin you're like marty mcfly right and oh. from the back to the future films because you know like in the back to the future films marty mcfly was like trying to battle against like being erased from existence like yeah. you know <laughs> you're exactly the same but in martial arts i can't tell you the amount of facebook posts and stuff like that on that 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 hark back to the old days you know particularly in scotland and whatnot and not a single picture of you not a single mention of you i'm like Hang on a second. What? What's going on? Were you? Were you? I, I mean, am I missing something here? Am I like on the wrong, uh, wrong ship? Well, here? you know, know, when they, when they, they, they kind of took all that. They, they obviously didn't want to. They, you know, I suppose it's partial guilt, and they just, I don't know. They do what they want. It's they just, quite, uh, it's just quite funny. It is funny because in reality, and I think that probably hurts people when they do things like that is that they can't eradicate history they can't take it away it's always going to be there everything they learned everything they did everything they earned was thanks to me so well, it's like there's nothing that they can do about that uh and except eradicate my photograph <laughs> wow yeah no well you know i just i but just I, thought, but I, yeah. yeah i was gonna say i do get letters or i did until i just told them to go forth and multiply mm. uh i did get letters from them how you know great i was and all that 
and I think I've kind of dug my own grave because I, you know, when someone does something like that to you, and then uh, and then you end up uh, telling them what for, I guess they just go, oh no, I'm not going to get to contact him again, and then of course I, I disappear. Martin McFly comes to light, yeah. yeah. I say. <laughs> disappear out of there and they they thank all their instructors that have taught them over the years yeah. but fail, fail to mention the previous 20 years oh, <laughs> anyway anyway listen I, I yeah i just thought i'd mention that stuff with because we did we just said oh we won't talk about that but now we just yeah, did. well the most important thing we're talking about kung fu and we're talking about future of lao and we're talking about the concept of lao and anybody who wants questions about lao this is this is important to me. It's not mm. about. Uh, I think with this lockdown and everything, it's kind of brought home to me how important it is for people to sort of get information when they can't necessarily go to a class. And sometimes even then, when they go to a class, maybe they haven't got the kind of information that mm. they can otherwise get. So yeah. you know, we we've all got to start somewhere, instructors included. So as as a, as an old fogey, uh, veteran instructor, uh, been teaching for a long, long time. Um, I guess it's it's great to get that opportunity to get information, mm -hmm. but also it's great because you can actually turn around and argue with me, because that's the one thing I love doing with people, mm -hmm. making a good point. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. And when you talk about different concepts or different ideas of of other martial arts, and they say, oh, you know, you don't understand the way we do things and so on, it's got nothing to do with whether I understand it. It's got to do with simple science. You know, it, it's as it's as simple as that. You know, tactics and strategy, science, you know, and and you know, techniques. Yeah. And, I, and uh, if you yeah. if you're doing stuff like that, you know, that don't work, then then I want to know about it. It's like the the biggest problem when I because I obviously I got quite a few people I follow on Facebook and whatnot. And more, more so to keep keep an eye on people, you know. <laughs> it, uh, that's kind of me. But I see a lot of these instructional videos, and like we're no different. We put stuff out there, which is, but we we don't, you know, we we've not done it really during the lockdown that much. But the biggest thing I I think is the the biggest question you need to be asking them, which nobody does, is why. Just simply why, you know. Yeah. And I think a lot of these people. Cause, um, you know, certainly the Taekwondo lot. And I don't, what I mean is the, the, the technical syllabus, and I use the word technical very loosely there, within sort of the Taekwondo, from what I have seen. Now I'm talking about Taekwondo well, in the West Remember, we, it's, it's always going to be, yeah, it's going to be a specific Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, group, what, I'm, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. So I'm not, I'm not generalizing, but, you know, hey, you know, if the shoe fits. But mind you, they could say the same about Kung Fu. So, you know, I, 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 yeah. I would totally, you know, understand their point of view. But from yeah. what I see, the technical syllabus that these people are putting out, um, it is it is nowhere near the standard that we we um, kind of profess to, uh, I, I say we profess to, uh, to, to throw out there. And I'm, I'm pretty damn sure we do do it. Um, like I said, we, no one's going to be the best fighter in the world. No one's going to be the best technician in the world. But... You know, when people aren't asking the question why, and certainly what I see with a lot of these Taekwondo videos, it's just utter, you know, like, yeah. you know, anyway, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so well, I just... I know what you're saying, and, and, and it's really important for us to emphasise that every single style has quality in individuals mm. that really prefer really work hard mm. to perfect their style. Yeah. Now, whether or not it's scientifically sound, that's... You know, a matter for conjecture. Different people have different ideas, but and then on the other hand, of course, you've got the majority of people who put videos out there. They put it out there at the stage that they're at at that point in time, and yeah. probably you can you can guarantee that in a year or two's time they're going to regret putting it out. Oh yeah, because so many people do do really terrible. Um, demonstrations or really terrible videos i mean i know in my time i've done some awful videos oh well not videos but demonstrations because someone's probably videoed it um you know the, the the thing is unfortunately you know it's in a crowd anyway so people yeah. have a lot, a lot of memory mm. I, i've done some really stupid things i i definitely could guarantee yeah that. yeah and and but but everyone does as, as we've said before um, but it isn't about uh, when we discuss like this it isn't about you know what I'm doing it's just 
the experience I have. Mm -hmm. So people can either take it or leave it. And it's great when they dispute it. Okay, if someone disputes what I'm saying, then that's better than just listening to it and just going off on a rant. Um, I'm not doing it specifically because, you know, I'm professing to be great. I'm not saying that I'm great. What I'm saying is I have some experience and when I'm listening to people argue my point, it's brilliant because I can get, as long as they've got mm. technical value in their argument, yeah. then we all learn from it. Yeah. So not just me, but everyone learns from yeah. it. Yeah. Do, do you know what got me thinking the other day? We were we were because we were st we've started on the podcast. The last one, oh, well, for, for quite a few. We've been talking about the Laugar syllabus, but you know, and I want to continue on that with this one. But what got me thinking the other day is: do people? There's a, a lot of people. Do you think they 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 end up hiding in the sanctity of syllabus, as opposed mm -hmm. to? the actual um, understanding of the martial art itself. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I did have a, um, a, a letter or an email or a message or whatever from someone who was talking about, um, we, we talked about it last week, I think, or last podcast, mm. talking about um, the Chinese, um, uh, what you call it, the, the terminology, the terminology, that's it. And and obviously and and my, you know the the kind of answer, you know, because people will say yeah, but it's just a load of crap and and all that kind of thing. Well, no, I don't. I, although I, I'm not that. I'm not a follower, okay, of Chinese terminology, for the sake of Chinese terminology, okay. Right. I'm not. I'm not interested in it, for that reason. I'm. I'm not. I don't want to particularly. Um, you know take a class and then say right this does that and the you know the dragon climbs up the mountain and you know farts in the river or mm. whatever uh so i think it has a place it has Sorry. a place uh, um, i mean what i actually written i wrote back because they they kind of says well you know it's bullshit isn't it now i you know i think they probably believed in it and i don't want them to put be put off by uh what i say but you know, my answer was basically uh, it has a place for enthusiasts who want to feel they're learning uh, traditionally. OK, uh, but it doesn't guarantee that they are. Of course, it doesn't. Uh, and as for me, you know, uh, the, way, the way I'm concerned, I, I'm as far as I'm concerned, I, I've seen so many useless teachers in so many arts and that's inverted commas yeah. uh, that it kind of makes makes me not want to be in that category, you know, rather offer a, an art as a work in useful style, right? Yeah. That's the way I like to see it. Then be labeled just another Kung Fu because Kung Fu has got a name because of, of I mean, you take a look at the, the, not just the nationals, but look at any videos and that. They've got these people doing Wushu and don't get me wrong, they are absolute amazing, absolute brilliant um, uh, gymnasts and, and throwing themselves all over the place. But where does gymnastics stop? and martial arts start yeah. you can't see it and people want to learn that because they see it it's beautiful and they want to learn it and to the detriment of the technical and useful aspects of their style because technology in, in other words a fighting ability doesn't necessarily look pretty right it just doesn't look good mm. it's simple it's almost invisible it's done in such a short movement that it means nothing in yeah. the aesthetic sense. Mm. And so when you come to demonstrate your art, there's nothing really to demonstrate unless you are having a fight. Now, if you're having a fight, that's where it becomes a demonstration of skill and, and you can see how it then works. Yeah. But if you take that away and start throwing yourself around so that you then look athletic uh, uh, dynamic you know and and sort of um, I don't know just just gymnastical mm. if that's a word gymnastic mm. then I think you're losing the you're missing the point right you're trying to yeah but I what guess, but some, yeah but some sorry but well, some people think the point you know what we all have different reasons for doing it right 
yeah 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 but but okay you're missing my point then in that case my opinion and that's all it ever is on these podcasts you know unless someone wants to give me their opinion i'm it's always going to be my opinion i mean i know you give me your opinion all the time so it's <laughs> it's just a matter of like my opinion so look if it works in the fight then it's a good martial art if it's going to be used to demonstrate to try to win over um new students because they think it looks amazing like the movies and they want to be able to fly and they want to be able to do these dynamic movements unfortunately you're never going to get fighters joining because fighters have got a different sense of reality and they're not interested which is why kung fu has the bad reputation because these the people who want to fight don't want to throw themselves around like that when they can even without learning martial arts they can see the flaws in it they can see the the you know the naivety in it well the flaw, flaws according to them though but because you know i could make yeah. the argument that athleticism and beautiful forms to a point has a has a place yeah that's true but if you imagine someone jumping up and doing a flying kick and you've got the skill of or the 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 let's say the uh, attitude of a fighter you're going to close that gap before they even get off the ground yeah and so that then it becomes obsolete and mm -hmm. then anything they do becomes obsolete because the fight should be over by that time yeah and that's that's the problem with what people see as a martial art yeah. and what martial arts actually is or you know when i'm talking martial arts yeah. i'm always going to talk kung fu yeah but when you know. when you when you say oh, it becomes obsolete now this is just me putting out my my uh, thoughts on it <laughs> when you start saying things oh it becomes obsolete because that's the mentality of a fighter that very mentality has led to the destruction and and dissipation and you know of genuine martial arts because people turn around and say that don't work i'm not going to do it so it, it becomes a saturation a la Jeet Kune Do, which is, let's face it, it might be a style in itself, but it's essentially predicated on the saturation of traditional martial arts because they've gone, I don't like this technique from uh, uh, Wing Chun and I don't like this technique from Taekwondo. I don't like this, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. So I'll yeah, yeah, forget yeah, training. No, that's, I think that's a different, a different situation. I think if you're looking at martial arts and you're, I mean okay fair enough i understand that an individual who may not like a particular technique doesn't like that technique because of its range in comparison to their size their mm. weight and their attitude their age you know and so on I, I do appreciate that some people will look like that but that's not learning the whole style then you're you're that's when they're dissipating the style yeah i'm not talking about the style itself i'm talking about where people will throw out moves flamboyant moves mm. that have no place in a fight scenario yeah. where they will sort of make it look pretty in order f specifically to make it look pretty oh, and right. not where it's where it's never going to reach a target where it's you know it's it's dynamic in in the sense that it's you know you know jumping up doing three kicks you know in the air before you land that is absolutely amazing it's very mm -hmm. athletic mm -hmm. it's it's very skillful but if the target's moving and it's got brains and he's not going to stand there while you prepare yourself for this jump he's going to take basically you know my my attitude is like i was always good at sweeping when i did competition and and in general fighting I was always good at sweeping and I always knew when the person was going to move and all I did was not be where I should be in other words the most important thing is when you do a sweep is that you always your intention is to stand where your opponent is standing that's where you end up right yeah. and so if you move towards the opponent even if he doesn't move if he's trying to get you from that place you you end up standing where he should have been but now he's flying now he's falling over now yeah. he's he's been swept okay and if he steps back he's just giving you more space to do right. it yeah. so it doesn't make any difference right if he can't see me coming because he's not looking at my feet and i'm playing around with my hands or doing something else or maybe completely fainting he, he doesn't get to see it that's 
that's what is invisible okay yeah. that's what I mean by visibility yeah. so if if he's gonna throw himself around and I can just move in I mean I've told you about the, the fight with the uh, Thai boxer mm. and he, he came with all his did I not no go on I don't think uh, you mentioned it on the well, podcast he came with all his his mates they were doing self-defense I was doing a school project for some yeah I'm sure I've mentioned it anyway yeah, it cuts a long story short. I did a course at a, at a school and it was a self-defense course. And obviously people, you know, they learn in the self-defense, but they're probably thinking just like anybody would think, you know, from these uh, flamboyant martial arts, oh, it doesn't look great. It's just too simple. And so, you know, you started getting people, oh, is there more to it and whatever. And I just said to the teacher, oh, uh, let's do kickboxing. We'll call it kickboxing. We'll get them in there get them jumping around, punching pads and all that sort of thing. The following week, this guy turned up with his own pads and his mate came in with a camera and said, oh, you know, I do Thai boxing, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. And he was really good, he was great. And uh, he, he, he was doing all these jumping stuff as well. So, I mean, I know that he wasn't just Thai boxing as in like ring fighting. Yeah, he yeah. just wanted to show off all his stuff. Yeah. So and uh, the, uh, including you know jumping, spinning kicks, and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So as he did, you know, he did. I knew that he wanted to fight, so we put the pads on and that just for fun. And uh, his mate was filming it, and every time he jumped up to do a spinning kick or whatever he was trying to do, I just simply moved back out direction or out of the range, and then while he was landing, I just ran in kicked his leg from under him <laughs> and and every time i did that his mate was just all over the place with in yeah. stitches because you know he was filming it so because this guy really thought he was good yeah and and i mean i never thought of myself anything but i i i, I want to defend you know what i say i have to defend or at least when i was younger i wanted to defend physically mm. uh, just to make the point you yeah. know so yeah. it's it's really important to me it was so i was so passionate and and yeah, he just he just ended up on the floor every time, and I never hurt him, but he never he never even got a punch off because he was too busy trying to be too written. busy looking good, Mister yeah, Handman. Too busy, yeah, too busy <laughs> looking good. Yeah. What was his mate saying with the camera? <laughs> he was just laughing. Yeah. But like my daughter says the other day, what did she say? She says, uh, you know, I just she 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 told me to say this. You know, I just don't want to look cool anymore, but I can't help it. Oh you my! Know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! Well, this so, cool. But anyway, that's uh, that's yeah. a good example of how people teaching martial arts have gone for the pretty stuff, and to the detriment of a tactical awareness. Yeah. And 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 my view about kung fu is tactical awareness and strategic value. Yeah. And 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 for that reason. Yes, I, as we were talking about earlier, as far as the, uh, um, the, the terminology is concerned, terminology doesn't come into tactical awareness, right? right. But it, is, it does have a place for people who want to learn a traditional art. It has a place, but it shouldn't take the place yeah. of strategic and tactical awareness. Right. And that, that's where I'm coming from. So I want to emphasize that to people because I don't want people thinking, oh, I only know this or I only know that. You know, I've been around a long time. I've seen these things. I've learned these some bloody big, you know, the five animal forms and all that. And I just go, what for? Mm -hmm. So, but that's me. That's not them. Mm -hmm. They can do it. They can make big forms up. But my argument is, if you keep on bringing in t big Tai Chi forms and big Wushu forms into an organisation that is, prof is is statistically against all other, you know, styles within you know the UK if you like the one of the best if not the best fighting style fighting system there is in martial arts okay I'm not talking about individual competition I'm not talking about you know whether it's full contact semi contact or whatever I'm just talking about as generalization uh, statistically it has amazing s tactics okay and that work it's designed to work and now you take that away by introducing big forms you stop learning your basics you start learning your simple syllabus and and sooner or later you'll start deviating and start teaching 
these new wushu forms instead of the syllabus because that's what you want to learn as an mm. instructor guess what's going to happen everybody forgets what real martial arts is and they they forget their basics they don't concentrate on the strategy and the tactics and the scientific principles that make the style work instead they start following this trait of big flamboyant movements mm. now we know that when you learn kung fu in the beginning the movements are large not necessarily flamboyant and therefore not particularly great in demos but they are um, much bigger like we talk all the time about ABC you know when you're at school yeah, you're drawing yeah, yeah. big A's and yeah. so on so of course they're going to become smaller as you get better at them but you can't get better at them if you insist on making bigger and bigger movements yeah and, and that's my argument yeah so, but you're full stop you know you're not you're not saying don't do jumping kicks are you you're not saying no. that no no but what is a jumping kick James? no no i understand no. what a jumping kick is it's yeah. it can be an inch off the floor or you know exactly. uh you well, know a, a meter the benefit, five meters yeah. if you're flying but yeah. what i'm saying is you're you know when but there is a place right for every technique which is the way i've always learned from you and yeah if you yeah, you, for, you know you're because you're not you've never said oh don't train jump spinning kicks and all the rest of it no because no, no, no. It, there is a time in a place you yeah. know the odds are so you know huge that you can pull it off at this particular moment in time blah 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 rather than a back okay. fist for example but nevertheless yeah. if you don't train it you'll never ever be able to apply it and you'll never yes. know if you could have yes yeah but the point i'm making james is I didn't talk about techniques, okay, in per se. Mm. I'm talking about strategies. Now, mm. you can do any technique you want to do yeah. if you have a strategy in which it can be used. Which, but yeah. the problem, yeah, where in Lao, you do a flying kick yeah. for a reason. Yes, okay? yes, yes. So you will set that kick up and you will set the opponent up. Well, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where people will simply jump up and do kicks mm. without any knowledge of tactics because they've spent so long perfecting beautiful flying and movements and gymnastic movements that they no longer have an ability to create yeah. a strategy but this that's, is where that's, my, that's the difference yeah. you see no i understand that i, I understand i understand but the, the, this this is where you've got all these so-called reality-based self-defense methods invented yes. by tom dick and harry who yeah. turn around and say the last thing you ever want to do is a jumping kick in a street fight or you know like i had a massive argument once about hook kick in a street fight and my my argument is you know if you know you've trained that hook kick for example to the point where you know it is it is fast it is powerful you you can perform it without you know even thinking about it and if the opportunity arises why the hell not why limit yourself to well, to well, to this but and i understand this the, the the argument of well don't take your, your leg too high you you know you'll end up on the ground this yeah. that, the other. but it's like yeah. hang on a second if we apply that to every single technique then no one will end up doing anything yeah well that's true but you see when you talk about that hook kick it's totally down to your tactics and your training in terms of technique and the the strategies that you're using to fight if you have strategy then you must understand that you know if you understand how you can fight or how your ability yeah. could work in a fight you have a 50 percent chance of winning yeah, sure. if you know the opponent's capability without even knowing your own you have a 50 percent chance of winning but if you know your ability and the opponent's you have a 90 percent chance of winning yeah so that the the issue there when you're using that kick is do you know when to use it yes and do you know yeah. why you should and yeah. do you know what are the consequences that are gonna possibly happen when that individual when your opponent is in a particular um, position and if you can guarantee that you have or nearly guarantee at least that you have you know a 90 percent chance of that thing working mm. you can use it because remember the kicks and various other techniques are meant to be used 
at different angles, particularly kicks, yes. not necessarily the hands, because most hands tend to be used within the central range of, yeah. of your your motion, right? Yeah. That yeah. is, you know, right in front of you. Whereas yeah. kicks, you have side kicks, you have back kicks, you have spinning kicks, you have reverse turning kicks, you have hooking kicks, Let me, and, and yeah. so on. Yeah. So no, these I, these things can be used. They they're intended to be used at differing angles. Yeah. Okay, and therefore you can set people up to not even know where they are, but you can also set the heights up as well. Yeah. So if you think you can do a high kick, fine. You're gonna take a lot longer, but if you can set it up, fine. But when you don't practice strategy and you don't understand you know, fighting because you're too busy playing with beautiful movements, that's where you fall apart. Now you can have amazing movements and um, and be a great fighter at the same time. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I've seen some amazing yeah, yeah. Uh, fighters with yeah. beautiful techniques. Oh yeah. But they're training to fight. My argument is, when it comes to this, you know, doing demonstration forms uh, with Tai Chi or with Wushu, and and without no detriment to them because they have a place in demonstrations and they have a place in, you know, whatever uh, exhibitions. I don't care, but they not necessarily. You're not necessarily gonna benefit if you don't train fighting, and consequently, everybody thinks because they see all these things on the TV, or they see these people do things at demonstrations or on videos, they look at it and say that won't work, that won't work, and they're bloody right. Of course, they're right. No one disputes that that is not going to work. It's it's not going to work because it's never meant to. Okay, yeah. that's why, and so you get so many. Then, like you say, Tom, Dick, and Harry, their club. Uh, we're just going to teach what works, self-defense, blah blah blah. I understand them totally. I know where they're coming from. I appreciate what they're trying to do, but they're missing the point. They're not looking at what traditional martial arts actually is in terms of value. They're looking at traditional martial artists who have taken it further than they you know than the tactics and strategy they've right. taken it into the realms of demonstration and exhibition oh, okay. yeah. and that's what they're looking at and they they can easily argue their techniques would work better yeah. because they're totally right they would you don't need to do that to fight yeah so the, the, this is where everybody's confused in what is kung fu well kung fu is just a way of fighting it's a self-defense a practical self-defense method used for thousands of years don't knock it on the head just because people are starting to you know they want to win demonstrations they want to win competitions by being more and more flamboyant so they they sort of start dropping what is actually good yeah but they confuse uh, the, they confuse yeah. the uh, the demonstrations with actual fighting ability which Absolutely. is why you see Everybody them getting does. knocked around all the time exactly you know and it's like what yeah. the hell but talking going back to what you were saying about you know the, the kicks and everything the same the, the same science uh, equally applies to just a simple back fist or a straight punch yeah. so if yeah. you haven't got if you don't know the opponent you don't know yourself there's no guarantee that just that that fast tech because we were talking about i was mentioning jumping kicks earlier on you know yeah. oh but you know just something like a simple straight punch that's not going to guarantee to land if you you know if you don't know your opponent if you don't know your own ability and more importantly if you don't know you know the well punch. you only have to look at how many times a boxer misses yeah i mean that boxer throws those punches thousands and thousands of times mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know when he's training yeah. and they still miss yeah, yeah okay yeah. because they also train to avoid them so if they're fighting someone who's mm. skillful at avoiding his punches well quite you know guess yeah. what they're not always going to hit and it's the same with anyone yeah. also of course you've got a guarantee because you're doing it in a self-defense situation you're not in a, in a boxing ring where you've got gloves and where your hands are all taped up to protect your bones yeah you're going to throw a punch and if you haven't trained it it's going to hurt you more than yeah. it hurts the opponent if you catch his skull you're going to break your fingers so for god's sake you know it's all about training and and preparation and so on as well but aside from that you don't need to use a fist because you've got so many different options in an open hand and this is another thing that people completely misconceive oh you know 
he, do, he can't even make a fist or he doesn't make a fist to punch so therefore he can't be a fighter that's not true you don't you you know do you need a fist to punch someone poke someone in the eye or or stab them in the throat mm. or grab their groin do you really need that do you need to be able to fly 10 feet in order to do a flying kick no you don't as you said quite frankly quite you know rightly earlier you know you jump one inch with one leg to reach the target it's called a flying body kick in mm. in our syllabus it's not called a flying kick it's called yeah. a flying body kick yeah. yeah which means your body's off the ground it doesn't say how far so therefore you take a step without landing it okay mm. until you've basically your kick is already at the target which means the whole weight of the kick is on that foot yeah. okay the whole weight of the body has gone forward on that foot so it hasn't landed on the ground it's going towards the opponent the opponent and so that's what a flying kick is or a flying body kick is so for these people who think that you've got to jump up in the air and then do the kick yes you train that because it's dynamic and it it, and it draws crowds okay it draws students mm. but there's got to be a time where people are taught strategy yeah. and tactics for fighting okay. because that yeah. is what the biggest thing that they want to do they want to learn to defend themselves mm. don't lie to them yeah yeah um i want to ask the question then so i want to bring it back onto the syllabus of lao um not specific for right now but just in general terms right so i've got a question for you um uh, and i wrote this down earlier on does does having a syllabus detract from learning the style um and when i talk about the style i mean like strategies and tactics but equally does not having a syllabus detract from the learning of the style meaning right. did you, does that make sense to you yeah right and and what what i want to say is when when i talk about syllabus you know i'll define the syllabus for now as if you have any style of martial art that has a belt system or a sash grading system whatever we can uh, we can say that in your style that's syllabus so that's yeah. how i just d d define it for now but yeah does having a syllabus detract from the learning of the style but equally does not having a syllabus detract from the learning of the style which what, what do you say to that? okay having a syllabus most definitely has to enhance a process of learning right you have to know where you've got to you have to understand how far someone has learned you have to understand how well they've learned and to do that you need to give them something to learn now if you just give pe dip people you know things willy-nilly you really don't know where you are i want you to okay i'm going to use i'm training to uh, driving instruction in canada at the moment yeah and i have a syllabus to learn i have word for word okay yeah it's all about teaching people to be safe drivers not just driving and passing the test but literally being safe drivers now if you don't have that syllabus we all think we can drive safely right but without a quick you know shoulder check without a quick look in the mirror there's a danger you forgot to tell them to look in the mirror why because you didn't think it was important at the time you were teaching their syllabus. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. Right? You don't have a syllabus, you don't know whether you've told them to look in the mirror, or you don't know whether they're going to do a shoulder check at that point in time, see pedestrians crossing as they turn into traffic to turn, in my case, left at lights, in your case, turning right at lights <laughs> because you're <laughs> driving on the wrong side of the road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you, you set yourself up to turn you know across a set of traffic lights in whether you're going left or right doesn't matter and you've got to cross the the oncoming traffic so you turn into it yeah thinking you've got space yeah but you didn't check to see if there was people crossing on the crosswalk you have to stop now and guess what you're right in front of the oncoming traffic you can't run the person over in order to get out of that yeah. you can't reverse because there are cars behind you yeah. what do you do you're stuffed mm. why because you never got taught at the time you needed teaching yeah and that is what's called syllabus yeah right without syllabus 
you've got no way With, of you know when you're generally teaching mm. lots of people mm. of course if you were teaching an individual mm. yeah right. you'd still need some kind of progress chart don't yeah. you yeah yeah okay but 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 then like we've always said that the the syllabus and i'm talking mainly about the hand blocks kick blocks walks and whatever the syllabus in lao was was you know invented at a time when the classes were huge blah blah, blah. we all know that you sort of when master yao was learning there was no hand blocks and kick blocks it was a question of use your noggin make you know apply it yourself and I'm here as the teacher or whatever to make sure you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so on one hand, this is what I'm saying. On one hand, you're telling me that, you know, hand blocks and kick blocks, James, they detract from people learning, um, uh, being forced, if you like, not forced, being encouraged to uh, think about it. But on the other hand, you're saying, like you've just done now, we need syllabus to keep people on the right track. So which is it? Yeah, yeah it's we do need syllabus. Mm. Having said that, you said earlier that they were created because they were big classes. Yeah. So what we need is progress. Okay. Okay. Right. And what that means is sometimes you need to look at the syllabus and looking at the better ways of teaching. Just let's go back to the car scenario again. Mm. Right? When I started to learn to drive, yeah, yeah. handbrake and everything and and all clutch and all that kind of stuff yeah right a load of that stuff now in a modern uh concept of teaching driving it doesn't exist right doesn't exist yeah um the 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 way to hand signals for instance mm. you're going to use them now no. in in even taking a test in in england hand signals in a car do they put them out no. Not sure. If they do. <laughs> I don't think they do. No, because sure. they're no longer necessary. Okay, um, you know they here they do, um, but simply because they have certain signals with the one hand. Yeah. You don't put your hand across. Oh, I, I, I know a certain <laughs> signal with the one hand. I use it quite often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's the one finger jam. Oh right. Oh, okay. You mix in them all. <laughs> okay. So anyway, the, the point I'm making is. You know, as uh, technology changes, as progress changes, as the ability to teach, you know, uh, better forms of teaching. You know, we never knew before about things like um, dyspraxia. We never knew things uh, like um, Asperger's. We never knew things like that. You know, my wife thinks I'm Asperger's, but I was never diagnosed with it. Mm. And, uh, you know, I just got well, a split personality. You, you think I'm bipolar? <laughs> Yeah. Oh God, there's a lot of diagnosis yeah. coming from your neck. Yeah, we, <laughs> well, we're all doctors, aren't we? We're yeah. all doctors. <laughs> the, the point is, both bipolar, uh, Asperger's, uh, dyspraxia, dyslexia, all these things didn't exist in, in the big scheme of things when we were teaching people at school. You know, when we were being taught at school, they were just disruptive kids. Yeah. You know, ADHD, they were just disruptive kids and they got a slap nowadays they get their own class yeah. it's just you know it's just progress james so yeah. when it comes to the syllabus it changes with progress and i think there is a good um argument for altering the syllabus to suit the size of classes today and 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 there are certain things that people don't necessarily need having said that <laughs> often people are limited how they're teaching again it depends on the I remember in martial arts there's no quality control for teachers there's no college you can go to to learn how to teach right yeah so th for most people it's not it well there probably is places where you could learn to teach better but you don't have to do no, it in no, order you're, to teach you're talking about just the uh, the academic qualifications yeah. you're not talking about uh, what it yeah. takes to actually teach the uh, no, that's the, right. the unknown element if you like yeah that's right so and there's no there's no you know as you say academic um 
facility for people to go and learn how to teach martial arts. Consequently, no, the event- there is there is academic facilities to go because we've been on one. We did that uh, teaching course. Do you remember? Yeah, years ago, but that wasn't but that, but national, that wasn't that. Yeah. Did, but that wasn't. Uh, I'm, well, I'm not saying that doesn't qualify us to actually teach the martial no, art, which is what we're true. talking about. Yeah, that's true. We did go on a you know one of those. Uh, what were they called? Bloody forgot. Oh, N- NVQ thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, um, no, you're right. But but the point is, not everyone has to do those. Okay, they don't have to do them. So consequently, you have different degrees of quality yeah. in teaching. And so, for some, teaching the hand blocks is all they can do in order to they they keep to that same schedule, mm. and they that that's all they can do because it's the best way they can understand how to teach the syllabus when as others might say well wait a minute i mean i'm not going to teach the walks up and down the room i'm going to make them turn every three turns or i'm not even going to bother doing them at all but i think they're important but i think they need to be changed as far as hand blocks are concerned Mm. all they are are vehicles for learning right now if everybody decided to start teaching their own different hand blocks and kick blocks what would happen to a national curriculum? Uh, it would. It would be in, it would in, a, in an association. Yeah, yeah, would go out exactly. The no one would be able to grade if they yeah. were being graded by someone who's qualified to grade them, mm. as in the BKFA MSTO grades every black sash. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, or at least the panel, if MSTO is not available, there will be a panel. Now that panel needs to know where that school's coming from in terms of tech, you know ability. Yeah. yeah. And they, if they can't see that syllabus being done at least to a quality that they expect, a standard they expect, what's going to happen? It's, it's going to fall apart. Yeah. So there has to be a curriculum. Is, is like, I mean, we can talk about the BKFA in terms of a standardised um, quality, yeah. but equally we can talk about any other organisation in martial arts in terms yes, of yes, standardising yes. quality. Now, yeah. remember that martial arts, I always think that martial arts is a really kind of, like a socialist thing and it's and i it mean it, i don't think it's very good because you've got a lot of people saying oh you're great you're amazing that's great brilliant well done now go off and teach the class and uh, you know there you go next person yeah oh fantastic you're you're brilliant you know i'll, I'll grade you yes you meet the black sash requirements blah, blah blah now go off and go so everybody i think is too not not that they're being too nice right but they're <sighs> You know, when you get when you when you have a situation like that where everyone's kind of afraid to to, to be brutally honest with people, yeah. rather than say, "Hang on, mate, what you're doing makes no sense." Now, why are you doing that? Stop to teaching that. That's rubbish, right? I hope yeah. you're not teaching your students like that. Or you know, hang on a second. I mean, not unlike the what your attitude is, but not not that you've ever said that to, you know, within the BKFA or, or anyone really. But what I'm saying well, is when we sort of, you know, uh, allow people for the sake of being nice to them to, to go off and teach crap, I mean, it, it, that's not good, is it? No, it isn't. And that's the, that's the problem with associations. Like I said, there's no curriculum or no standard that anyone has to reach Apart, once they've took their black sash, it doesn't matter, or even before the black sash they're teaching, but there's, that's nothing to do with teaching. So it's, it's down to the individual then, and unless you can control the individuals to become teachers and have like a teacher's college where everyone learns a curriculum mm. that they're going to teach and they're going to have to reach a particular standard and they're going to have to be retested every so often yeah. to make sure they're reaching that standard and their students are going to be seen to be reaching that standard then it's it's always going to be like that when i was in scotland teaching scotland for instance uh every single group because there were like 26 different areas yeah at one stage or more um from inverness right the way down to the borders i had clubs yeah. And every single group had the same uniform, but the 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 uh, the lines down the side of the uniform, the the uh, stripes down the side of the uniform, all had different. There were two stripes, but they had different combinations of colours: blue and white, yellow and white, yellow and yellow, blue and yellow, yeah. whatever. It didn't matter 
the fact is that each club were allocated a specific stripe color now when they came to gradings on mass the gradings were held on mass um, and you had all the senior instructors walking around judging people reporting if they see mistakes yeah. rather than frighten some poor guy or some little kid to come and stand in front of a panel of like eight or ten people we would go out to them so we would have everybody training together the atmosphere was amazing because they all were competing with each other different groups you know white sashes doing you know basic uh, horse dance and punches competing with the blue sashes doing their punches yeah. you know and so on so they were all competing with each other but they were all united all as all the different clubs were united now what the benefit of that was I could walk around there as could the senior instructors and they could pick out people that were making the sil getting the syllabus wrong okay when right. they were split into groups to do sil certain syllabus right. so when they were split up you could take a look at them and you could say oh I can see that guy's wrong what color is his uniform mm. so you look down you see the stripe you know exactly who is his teacher now if you see two or three people doing the same thing you know it's the teacher's fault if you see just that one person then you know it's then that one person's fault so you can correct that person to a degree and mm. we always like to correct them at the at the grading because no one wants to see anyone fail but at the same time if they're just bad and the other thing of course is they have the wrong attitude that's when they would fail so the, the whole point was about respect it was about quality and so on but yeah. if we did see three or four people incapable of doing the syllabus we could then see the instructor and say I notice that your instructors are doing and your students are doing this doing that doing the other and very quickly we would be able to change that yeah and the important thing is that sometimes even the instructor didn't know he was being judged because when it come to the senior class which is why it was so important to have everyone come to a senior class we could then use that problem as a topic for that class right and yeah. we would go yeah. through that part of it yeah and so everybody was being judged but not realizing they were being judged let me let me ask you a question when you were uh when you were uh, a high falutin high flying straight shooting rootin tootin guardian right <laughs> when you went to all these guardian meetings with uh, with everybody else what was the, the 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 whole point of these meetings other than to have a conflab around a table and whatnot i get that but when it comes to the training okay we did you adopt a similar sort of attitude would you all pick out a, a topic of discussion to uh you know to, to focus on or or what what was the what was the sketch there well i think they had i mean it's a different thing the 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 meetings for the uh, association were different to the meetings for training so obviously we went to a weekend training every right. so often and yeah. usually the topic was already set right. the agenda was set maybe someone had mentioned it somewhere yeah. this is not being taught properly that's not right. being taught properly or maybe everybody wants to learn this set or that form or those yeah. weapons let's go over the weapons okay. so trying to basically bring all the senior people to think in the same way and learn from the same hymn sheet if you yeah. like yeah. Um, yeah that that worked but it isn't big enough to, to be fair it wasn't big enough to affect the whole association because it was only for the guardians and therefore yeah they would go back and then try and teach it to their people but not everybody had guardians in their area right so the concept of the guardians uh would have kind of it wouldn't have been enough no for so, the association uh, yeah that big. but so the basically the quality control was not there in terms of yeah. from the top straight down to the bottom if you not, like because there was there was a area. few not in every area because there was a few chains that were broken like lines yeah. of communication yeah there's a lot of chains broken yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and and also yeah people would be left alone for for years on end without any real instruction at well all. you and saw they, that they, in scotland well, i mean yeah, yeah exactly I, exactly yeah, i went to scotland i saw them on the summer course that was the only time they ever got new new understanding of yeah. teaching yeah. the only time and i mean sometimes they come down to brand sash courses but not mm. all of them obviously only only brand sashes and above came down uh, to the brand sash course and then you know you're, you're talking a six hour drive not everyone can do that and then get back over in the evening no. to have to go to work the next day it's not always possible yeah. so 
So what tended to happen was they'd go on the summer course. That's why you'd see a lot of them on the summer course. But even then, they were in two different camps arguing, you know, one part of Scotland didn't like the other part of Scotland and well, so on. So it was always... <laughs> Yeah, you had the Fife and the Edinburgh are different. But they're all clans, aren't they? I've watched Braveheart, Jesus. Ab absolutely. <laughs> and that's exactly how it was. They were like bloody clans, yeah. <laughs> and so I went up there, I guess, after seeing them on the summer course, talking to them and and, and then talking to Mastia, and he said, well, you know, you've got to go up there, and uh, if you go up there, you'll do this, do that, the other, and they'll all come under you, which mm. which happened. And then I kind of united the clans, if you like. Oh, my <laughs> so, God. So there's there's, it, there's a character in Braveheart that's based on you. <laughs> I just don't know who it was. <laughs> yeah, so, so for 20 years, yeah, 20 years, mm -hmm. we, uh, we had a really good uh, build-up of, uh, you know, development in, in Scotland from the time I've already talked about it on another podcast, how bad it was. Mm. And, um, yeah, it, it was well, that's, 20 that's, years of hard work. Yeah, well, that's interesting because you wouldn't know it to watch any of the uh, photos of you because, well, you're not there. Well, I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not on the photos. <laughs> I've, I've been erased. I've been erased like Marty McFly. <laughs> no, in terms of the way you... Uh, so, I, I mean, I don't want to just talk about your organization i i'm trying to just sort of understand and the, the what makes a good association if you like what, what how do you control the quality what did you do in scotland uh, you've just mentioned when you were grading you would look at yeah. people where to you know what what lessons did you learn that weren't implemented within the bkfa or what lessons from the bkfa did you learn that you implemented in scotland to improve the quality I didn't. No, I I developed those. I mean, okay. I'm I'm blowing my own trumpet now. Well, okay, just tell the I, truth. I, I, <laughs> no, no. I, yeah. I made I made the uh, the single, the polarity of um, of grading. So everybody graded under me. No one graded anywhere else unless you know it, there was a specific reason. Okay, um, but no, we always had gradings. We all them had them. They were paid in advance. We always gave them options to regrade. Etc. Etc. If they couldn't mm. pass, um, we always had senior classes. Yeah, it, it was it was good. And I remember having a meal with Mastiao uh, in some restaurant, just me and him. And he says, you know, if if I had my time again, I'd do what you were doing. And how do you think that made me feel? Wow, hey? I bet that really. Uh, yeah, I just. I bet you couldn't walk out the door after that meal. No, I banged me head on the on both sides of the door as I went out that <laughs> restaurant. But honestly, it was true because, you know, we all learn from our mistakes. And, and of course, all of us, including Master Yao, have, have, would like to do it differently if they had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And of course, that was the case with, we talked about the other podcast about uh, uh, an organization of kickboxing that, uh, that I joined. And he learned several times that he, he shouldn't have you know done it the way that he initially did it and he yeah. ended up kept changing it um unfortunately you know his his kind of greed got the you know got yeah. the better of him yeah so uh, you know such is life but uh no i didn't i didn't re i only applied the syllabus to to scotland i didn't apply and i and the belief in in one unit which was the bkfa um you can say that that was a great achievement but at the same time, it was, you know, kind of an undoing because I believed in the association too, and I believed, you know, in everything to do with it. Um, and then, of course, when it was when I was down south, uh, when the cats away, the mice will play. Mm. And the next thing I know is, you know, oh, don't worry, you know, we'll look after that for you and all that. And uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle. Mm. I'm in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. So, but we've been through that. Yeah, and yeah, I'm, yeah. Not in, I'm not interested in talking about you know that kind of thing. I'm interested in. Um, yeah. I want to see how, in the future, Laogar will again prosper because. But you need to listen to the people that have that knowledge of that teaching knowledge, and and not just. I'm not talking about how good they are at the syllabus because that can be changed. That can be improved we're talking about experiencing building organizations and making the organizations work mm. and how to you know treat and well treat the uh, the individuals that are running those organizations for you yeah because they are dedicated to the one purpose 
okay and if you change that if you you know uh, disrespect that then you lose that that loyalty mm. and you lose that belief and then it becomes it impacts on the, the various remember it's it's it might be a small country the UK but it's bloody big in terms of trying to organize a national organization and you 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 yeah. take that that um, that away you know in the future you've got no chance to build an organization <clears throat> you have to have a central figure and I think Mastier was an amazing central figure uh, you, because everyone yeah. believed in him do you think that the, the, the BKFA's early success was because of Mastiao as that central figure? Do you think that uh, anyone else could do that? And I, what, I, what I mean is, like, we've talked before about Mastiao being, like, you know, the figure where everyone, different minorities, could gravitate towards him because, you know, he was the Chinese guy and there was not any sort yeah. of systemic racism and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, so that kind of brought the organization together at a time when things were a lot different socially than they are today. But do yeah. you think, obviously, you know, I'm not talking about then now, I'm talking about now, you know, Master Yao is taking a step back. Do you think that the BKFA can, can, can sort of attain that level of unity without Master Yao. I think there are an awful lot of people in the structure of the um, hierarchy, if you like, that, that totally, totally believe and can still take, uh, you know, pay homage, if you like, to Master Yao and still homage. get information. Homage. Homage. Oh, right, yeah, <laughs> I'm kidding. Homage. Go on. Homage. 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 Yeah. yeah. Go on. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's still a lot of people there that, that want to and, and really desperately want to uh, get um, a unity yeah. and maintain a unity um, but when you get uh, people who start running their own thing and start thinking well wait a minute you know I need this I need that I want this I want that because they're not listened to or because uh, their, their complaints go un unheard Mm. then of course you are going to get dissent and you're going to get less you know um, unity and in, in, in time that will kind of become you know the, get, the cracks will become much bigger yeah. so, so I'm hoping that people will eventually talk in a sense where they can be heard yeah. where <laughs> they are going to be listened yeah, to yeah, and yeah. things are going to be you know up acted upon yeah but but look look and i'm going to say this because we we do this podcast why do you think we do this podcast what's the reason i don't know i ain't got well, to be honest with you. well what is it what what we don't want to do is divide right we don't want to divide no. people we want to, we want to bring people together right at least yeah. get them thinking now we yeah. might have a different philosophy on teaching or on whatever we might have our opinions and whatnot, but the last thing we want to do is divide the the the, the, the sure. Laogar style. Now the problem is you're talking about you know everyone coming together and that. It's no yep. secret that our podcast is kind of like the black sheep out there in terms of Laogar. <laughs> and the fact is yeah. we're the only podcast talking about Laogar. Like, yep. but we have had no, in fact, lit, no support. From, from any of the, the, the hierarchy of the BKFA. We've not had like, well done guys or whatever. And hey, yeah. I don't expect that. I'm not yeah. saying give us, you know, oh great. But I'm just saying it would be nice to, to be in communication with some people. Yeah, right. Now, think, well, if uh, the problem no. the problem we've got then is if, we, if, if it's about communication and what we're doing, you know, surely, you know, us doing this, we've had no thanks, no, hardly any bugger likes us. But it's like, but it's well, true. I don't know that, James. I, no, I, that's, I, that's your okay. that's your assumption. We we well, because we had no. I go. I, yeah. All right. Well. But okay. I do have to say. I mean, you do realise. I mean, we have got a couple of fans mm. in the in and when I, whether when I say fans, I say that um, loosely, tongue in cheek, <laughs> loosely. Yeah, uh, and because they're listening and they're interested and they agree and they support but they can't this is the problem i'm talking about mm. unity yeah. they can't right be seen to support because we obviously talk about some very controversial 
situations, some very controversial uh, topics, and so it's the policy that you know you can't really uh, disrespect uh, other styles, and we, I don't intend to disrespect them. I, I only need to, you know, you know, call a spade a spade, so to speak, as they say, and it, and it's just not done to to uh, sort of diss people but but look there are people out there teaching martial arts without any capability whatsoever mm. destroying the concept of you know um generally the, the martial arts in general not just about lao i mean i know there are people who, who are out there you know calling themselves lao and whatever and then what's in a name they want to keep that name for a reason why do they want to keep that name because it's a damn good name with a great reputation yeah. and a great history yeah. that's why they want to keep the name but the problem is they're keeping the name and not being shown out for it mm -hmm. they're not being called out for it so if you're not calling them out they're going to grow and while you're sitting in your bubble they're going to outgrow you and the problem is they are outgrowing us yeah. as an organization yeah. they they will outgrow us and and that's because you're letting them yeah you but, know. but we, now, we we but i'm not being funny but like the focus is on what we're doing not on what they're doing so give you an example right you do a reaction video okay on yeah, people yeah. obliterating laugar obliterating but you're it, you're you're too harsh because you know you shouldn't be talking about people like that why why yeah. not why not how is it your yeah. fault and aren't they just shifting all the focus onto you and yeah. and meanwhile you know numpty bollocks over there is 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 proliferating is you know growing yeah yeah we're, we're, exactly. we're looking at the it's... wrong thing we're looking at yeah. the wrong thing yeah that's right they are they well not us we're, we're looking at the right thing but you know they, sometimes people in politics think that that's not the right way to go. We should be doing it this way, or doing it that way. Mm. Well, we should be doing it some way. But if you're not doing it anyway, uh, it it isn't what we do, right? That yeah. makes the other people better. It's what we don't do that makes mm. the other people better. Yeah. Right. It, and if we sit by and do nothing, and we don't try to promote ourselves and we don't unite, well, we can see what's going to happen. You know. You can you can call yourself you can you can go down a street okay mm. and you can and I don't know if I've said this before in any podcast but you can go down a street and look in the corner in a in a in a in a through a doorway and you can see this an old master teaching the most amazing techniques right and he's there doing absolutely perfect techniques uh, as yeah. a as a yeah. as a demonstration to his students and then his students are doing something. Uh, copying it, trying to work a form, um, and you think, well, that's amazing. That is really amazing. I think I might join him. And then you'll walk down the street a little bit further, and you'll see another open doorway, and you'll see this guy with a set of focus pads standing there, going, go, ba, 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 bum, punch, 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 jump up, kick, this, that, the other, yeah. fat fitness, press, press ups, press ups, and so on. And you'll go, wow, that's exciting. I'm going to join that club. And why are you going to join that club? Because it's it's here, and it's now. And you can learn straight off. You can punch a pad. You can do this. You can do that. You haven't got to yeah. learn hundreds and hundreds of, you know, hours of training the same technique to get it perfect. You know, yeah. it's and that's the problem, right? You've got to be able to have a measure of what people want and what people need. Mm. What they do is they just do what people want, and it makes them bigger because they finance themselves from that success. Now you can't get success if you don't give people what they want as well as what they need. Mm. So you've got to provide these both things. You can't just have a club going, we do traditional martial arts and this is how it looks. Well, no one is interested in what it looks like. They want to see it work. Yeah. Now, when you punch in a pad, you can see a punch work because it moves the pad, okay? when you see people train in a form you can't see it work so you've got to have an opportunity to provide both 
the ability to make it work against another individual, in other words, practice the form with partners, and you've got to have that, you know, spectacular practical method of hitting a pad so that the first time you hit someone, you don't break your knuckles. Yeah. You've got to be able to hit something. You've mm. got to have bags. You've got to have kick shields. You've got to have equipment nowadays, mm. right? Because you can't go out in the forest and break a tree with your shin. You can't go and punch a, is it a makiwari board or something like That's that? That's it, yeah. Yeah, and you're just going to keep on punching that? No, you've got to be able to use the technique fluidly by using it with an individual, with a partner. You've got to be respectful, which is what martial arts is all about, trying to respect the person so you don't know. But if you injure your partner, you're going to have to train with. So that's why you're using pads. In yeah. the old days, they can afford, you know, and they had the, the ability to, you know, put themselves right, you know, with their, uh, mm. you know, their ointments and, yeah, yeah. you know. So yeah. it's, it's, it's not like today where, you know, oh, you know, you hurt me, I'm going to sue you. So, so they're holding back now. Mm. Yeah. They're frightened. And so, unfortunately, you've got to find a way of putting these bringing these measures in to make your club great again yeah. and and um, you know people have found a formula nowadays which is called kickboxing which now takes people into a completely different zone where it gives them a false sense of ability because not all kickboxing clubs are good right and they but they're loving it and you can just teach it just for fitness and you'll you'll be your room will be full yeah. because more people want to learn fitness they want to learn martial arts so you've got to put that into it mm -hmm. and yeah and that's the biggest the, the first problem is people in in the powers that be in an organization will always think we want to teach our style no you want to teach your style but you need to teach people how to use it right that's the important thing you've yeah. got to give people the environment environment where they can literally use it now, mm. having competitions and stuff like that is fine, but that's only ever going to draw maybe 15% of individuals who have learned to use it. And then, of course, it's within the realms of sport. So you put the sticky hands together, and this is a typical example. You put the sticky hands together, watch people do sticky hands in a competition. Jesus, it's it's one of the worst things you can ever watch. Yeah, It's, it's awful. And so consequently nobody wants to do it yeah because they don't they don't get trained it they don't get taught it so it's it's a discipline it's you've got to have an activity where they're learning the what they need to learn but also what they want to learn and then they've got to be able to in, be encouraged to put it together and so they can actually use what they've learned yeah right. that, that's I think that's basically what we're about and that's why I'm not interested in Friggin, you know, the, the the dragon flew up the cuckoo's nest or what? Because <laughs> it does, yeah. it doesn't. What interests me is does that punch reach that target before that guy can see it? Right. And why did it do that? Yeah. Was it the guy was too slow to see it, or was it because the punch was? You know, do you think that that attitude, well? that attitude, has served you well though over the years? Do you, th do you genuinely, honestly believe that when? Obviously, it makes sense to me because I'm your student, right? So, mm. of course, you know. But do you think that attitude of yours has served you well? Of course, yeah, how do you define served you well? I get that, but, you know. Yeah, well, it serves you well because you see the quality of students you have. And I've seen some very good quality students, including yourself. We keep on harking back to, you know, you're not just technically on, you know, you have a great technical prowess, but you also have a quality in fighting, and and you've do, you did full contact to with a, with Ivan the Terrible, who believed that he was a full contact fighter, and and it was a full contact organization, and they gave him the fight, and yet not only had he never touched you in that fight, but he was left battered and bruised, and half his face black, and his eye closed, simply because he was desperately trying to hit you. But you proved that our tactics and our strategy and our, in, our, our, our will 
to make the style work works mm. <laughs> it prevailed and you proved it so when you see individuals like yourself Christ I'm bullying you up to it it's no I don't, it's like you it. to me. I don't like it yeah it's terrible it feels awful yeah <laughs> just to me yeah <laughs> and I have to admit these things <laughs> But honestly, these things, when you see people like that, like yourself, and then people come along and say, you know, someone attacked me in the street and they did this and I did that and it was brilliant. When you have that, it's worth thousands of students. Yeah. It only takes, you know, I mean, how many people get in that situation that often? Yeah. No, very few. So in, in statistically, in comparison to the number of students you might teach, you might only ever get a handful of people who have ever been in a bad situation but when that handful of people come to you and say I did this I did that it was brilliant I you know and of course it's happened to me too where I've been in those situations and it's and and you're high from it mm. because it's just so beautiful when it works mm. and you know it's yeah. just for, for me therefore yes yes my attitude has bloody worked yeah <laughs> and that's it and it's worked for me yeah oh, yeah just... and, I, and, you, and you know one thing james well i have to say i have never ever fought well i know that's not true I probably fought one or two individuals but majority of any confrontations i've had outside i've always been with more than one opponent always and that's that's a fact that i've never i've never really thought about before and and i'm not suggesting that i've beat them all up oh you're I've right controlled them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I've controlled the situation, yeah, yeah. and that's because I'm an arrogant git. Yeah. That's why, <laughs> yeah, because I have controlled that situation, yeah. you know, and and I've not allowed them. But that might just be my character. That's got nothing to do with martial arts. But the fact that I felt that I could helped a lot, and so yeah. that attitude, yes, goes a long, long way. And yeah, um, yeah I hope it does for everyone. Yeah. And, and I don't care how many world champions you have. All I want to know is they can defend themselves. Yeah. Uh, and sure. So, you know, but the guys that really work hard in the, you know, in the competition stuff and that they've, they've got, you know, obviously a lot of really, really good, talented and arrogant individuals that can look after themselves because they've, they're tactically training, mm. right? They're not going out and doing that was an F <laughs> wushu yeah. instead of the style they've been given yeah. right they've been given that style use the damn thing learn it mm. and if you don't learn it you know what are you doing there bloody wushu mm. I don't, I've got nothing against wushu I've got a lot against wushu in a laogar class yes right yeah. get back to the bloody laogar start training lao start training tactics with it and start understanding why it works and if you don't know why it works get some instruction mm. right and if you can't get the instruction of your instructor tell him to go and get some instruction yeah. and vice versa and, and you know and they're all going up to eventually get the instruction but don't train just because you know it's got a reputation train to make it work yeah yeah, and, you know, I, I, th yeah, I think the reputation though is uh, is not what it once was. So I think no, it we're isn't all because a lot sort of yeah. yeah, but that's because of the dissipation of organisation. Yeah. It's because people then go off doing their own thing and they have to figure out what they're actually doing. And then what happens? They start bringing in these things mm. to try to make up their syllabus. You talked about other styles going, oh, you know, when they've run out of things to do, they come out with the screamer sticks. Yeah. Well, get, get, <laughs> they do. Guess what, Laugar? Guess what, Laugar people do? They come out with friggin' screamer sticks. Yeah. They start farting around with all sorts of different styles and stuff. No, train it. Train Lao. You know, okay, if you're into grappling, do some grappling, that's fine, that's good, that's great to throw a little bit of grappling into it, you know, but figure out why you're grappling and also recognize the difficulties of grappling in a situation where there may be other people. Because once you're on the floor with one person, you've got to remember his mates are there. Mm. So, you know, you've got to consider, you know, the whole point of Kung Fu is to stay standing, right? Now, if you want to roll around on the floor, okay, then that's fine if you're on your own with an individual. But yeah. as soon as you're around weaponry, as soon as you're around his friends, 
you're in trouble as soon as you're around a curb jesus you yeah know? you're in trouble but uh, yeah no, no no i mean like I, I i have to say i love i love the the idea of doing uh the grappling and all that i, I because for me it would talk it sort of it adds another uh, an, a, an element of another di- uh, another path up the mountain, all right, so to speak. Yeah. So it's just like it's like kickboxing. You you take you take away a hell of a load of techniques, and you're just left with punches and kicks. And that yeah. is your that's your path up the mountain. So how do you make that work? Okay, fine. Let's take away the ability to punch and kick. Now you just you're in no man's land, or you, you're you, you know you're closer than that, so to speak. Yeah. Then what you're do grappling. you do? Yeah. So it's like it's not that you're against grappling. I know no, you're no, not. I'm not it's against the, grappling. No, no, it's just that you're against the false hope that it gives people in training. Because well, there's, two re- there's two things, yeah. right? Two things about grappling, right? I've already mentioned the one. Well, it's, it can only work if you're on the floor with one person and no one else gets involved. It can only right? work if you know. Uh, sorry, that, that's the first thing. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is grappling is in nature part of kung fu. Yeah. You're doing locks. Yeah. You're doing throws, so all you're doing is continuing that motion, but to the ground, right? In other words, you keep the lock on the ground, you, you lock him while he's standing, take him to the ground, now you're on the floor, the only reason you're grappling is because you let go of him. So if you're holding it, there's no longer any grappling, because by the time he's hit the floor, and he should hit the floor awkwardly, not like a judo throw where he can break fall, but he's got to land on his head, and he's got to land on his head while you're locking him, and if you lock him, lock in his control, right? Mm. Take away the control, just break his bloody arm. Because if you break his arm, the fight's over, yeah. okay? So why are you talking about grappling? Grappling is a way of training in a sports environment where both of you are adhering to a specific rule. That is, you've got his arm in a lock, he has to give up, yeah. okay? But, but it's but, also both of you are adhering well, to the same weight category. Yeah, that, and look, yes, there's that as well. But the point is, you see, is if you're holding his arm, expecting him to give up, but he finds a way out of it, now you're in trouble again. Yeah. So why didn't you just break his bloody arm? Because it's a sport. Hold... <laughs> exactly. I get you. I rest, yeah, I get I rest you. my case. Yeah, I get you. You see, as you've got him down there, you've got him in a lock and you're hurting him and he has to tap the floor and go, let go, let go. No. Right in self-defense, you get him down on the floor. You've got him in that lock. Snap the friggin' arm, yeah. and now mm. he, he can tap all he likes, but he ain't gonna try and get you back because he can't friggin' fight anymore. Yeah, but, so stop, okay. stop giving me any ball about how grappling is better than punching and kicking. No, it doesn't make any difference. The person who gets hit and hurt is the person who loses. Okay. But end of story if, if like i i understand what you just said but so my argument against what you just said because we always okay. like to have arguments don't we yep that's, how am yeah, i supposed I wish to, someone else would argue how how am i supposed to train grappling if you're saying there's no point in training it i didn't say there's no point in training us there's no, no but point you said in there's it. no point in the the outcome like you're saying oh don't train grappling because you know when you got him down you snap his arm like but you are it. training but you are training grappling james yeah. you're training it standing up Okay, okay, when yeah. you get him down, the grab. The, uh, this is why I say, that, that for me, mm. in that in that sense, grappling would be pointless because you've done the damage mm. on the way down. Right. If you're getting him in a lock now, understandably, people will say, "Yeah, but we might not be in a lock. We just might be in a skirmish. We may be grabbing each other, and the heaviest one gets you down, and then you've got to try and get your way out of it." Yeah. Well, then then you can't train biting the nose. You can't train ripping his ear off yeah. you can't point sticking his, your thumb in his eye and you can't train punching him in it has to be a sport doesn't groin. it it has to be a it sport to, rules yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but the 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 attitude towards fighting must be you know tactically survival okay yeah. you can't be just well okay i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do that so yeah it's a fine line and i do appreciate that people will say no but if you like you just said you know if you don't train it you can't learn it well that's that's fine but you can learn the locks Mm -hmm. standing up whatever you do standing up right you can do on the floor the only difference on the the floor floor, you can't do it standing up no 
but the only difference is when you're on the floor you've got the weight of that other person on you yeah gravity is against you yeah, yeah, yeah. so the only time it works is if you're a big enough person so you go tell that to some young girl who wants to learn self-defense oh i was watching one of those clive uh what's his name clive is it thompson thompson the the, the bald-headed ex-bouncer what's his name I think it's Clive. Jeff Thompson. Jeff Thompson. There you go. Jeff Thompson. One of his uh, YouTube video courses. I think this one was called Animal Day or something. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, no, so no. he's there. He's talking about like self-defense. And you know, like if you ever watch a Jeff Thompson thing, he's, he presents it in a very sort of rough, raw way, you know. Yeah, they all do that. They, right. But, but yeah. bear with me. So he's talking about all these, you know, this this will work because of this, this, you've got to be aggressive, got to do this, that, and the other. And you know, this is what self-defense is around, right? And I think this video was like filmed sometime in the early to mid-90s. So you look at his class, right? Not a single woman in his class mm. not a single yeah. woman there all a load of blokes with you know Ooh, i've got to keep you know i want to beat the shit yeah. out of somebody you know it's, oh, I don't, you know i'm an animal i'm an animal you know it's like this it's yeah. like okay so right. it's okay if he teaches bouncers yeah right if he teaches people who are going to be in that environment yeah. not no not that you know the ordinary guy in the office with glasses is the guy who's going to get mugged right not the big guy with the bald head he isn't going to get mugged mm. okay he's going to get stabbed so he better learn something else. But the guy with the glasses, he's just, people have just come up to him, take his chains off him, and take his, you know, his phone off him. He's got to know how to, de you know, uh, mm. defuse the situation. Yeah. Uh, he may not be capable physically of fighting them, but if he is mentally capable of fighting them, mm. there is a chance there because he's going to obviously understand the opportunity when, yeah. the opportunity if. Okay, that's the important thing: if and when. Not necessarily, oh, right, now I'm going to start throwing him to the floor. But if he can run, then that's the best thing for him. Yeah. But, you know, if they can catch him, yeah. he can still fight while he's standing up. But yeah. once he's down, the guys have got him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there's usually more than one, you know. Like, I mean, I don't sort of disagree with a lot of what Jeff Thompson says in terms of the principles. It's just the, no, the, no. the, the, the a lot of the uh, method and delivery... I yeah. think is just you know Jesus Christ you know if you know no. like I said if you're if you're a small statured woman or a, a small guy you know yeah. Christ's sake you you know yeah. what the hell so let's just take you back in time then perhaps and this is only assumption because I've not been in the army but let's just get in the army and everyone's going you know for the exercises for everything else you've got to survive you've got to do this you've got to do that and they're pushing and screaming at you and doing all that and they're building your character yeah. right they're creating a situation or, or a, they're, they're creating a persona that they expect will survive in that environment yeah right that's what jeff thompson is doing yeah in that yeah. kind of environment yeah I'm he's just, trying to create a persona that will in effect provide an outcome for his teachings but if you've got a completely different student, a completely different, um, uh, what should we say? Uh, I don't mentality, know, makeup. Mentality, yeah. Completely different makeup of people. That is not going to work for them. Mm. And I'm not suggesting for a second that, you know, them being all nice and polite is going to work either. They have got to change their persona. They have got to have an attitude but they're not going to be able to lie on the floor with a much bigger individual or more than one individual and fight them off. They're not going to be able to do that. So that's not, for me, which is why, because we're really talking about grappling, we, we, it's, it's not for me the be all and end all of you know, the end of the fight. Mm. Yes, they will, may end up on the floor, but the more skilled they are at running, standing and fighting, the more they're more skilled at using the environment around them, that includes the floor, the weather, the light, the dark. It includes everything on them, the person, whether they've got a pen, whether they've got a, you know anything. I would never use a knife. More people get stabbed with their own knife than the people they actually stab. So you know that's you know you cannot get into that situation. You've got to find other weaponry. And that includes hot coffee, includes anything. So you're creating a, a self-defense kind of attitude, but for people who need the attitude but may not have the 
physical attributes that someone who goes to you know Jeff's class will have mm. you know they're not going to survive in that class because they're just not going to meet the requirements to be a bouncer you know yeah, yeah. now I've seen some you know tall thin bouncers I've seen women bouncers today and you know why because they don't need to do that because it's all technology now it's you technology and you diplomacy and uh, you yeah, know it's yeah, courses it's, and qualifications and, and I get that yeah. like because yeah. You know, you can't it, just punch yeah. someone in the face because they didn't, you know, because they, yeah. you know, argued with you or yeah. wouldn't leave. Yeah. You can't just get your mates and drag them. When I used to go to nightclubs, <laughs> and that was a while back in the 70s, and, you know, uh, I remember going to a nightclub. I went for a 21st birthday, and guess what? The guy whose 21st birthday it was, was, you know, he, yes, he was a little tipsy punched on the nose by this bouncer he only argued with him he jumped on on top of him beating the crap out of him on the floor then his mates come along and helped him throw him out he was it was his frigging party jesus that is how you know and you just look at him and you know what i turned around to my girlfriend at the time and i said i am never going to a nightclub again <laughs> that's it i'm never yeah. going to give these people money yeah to do yeah. that yeah you know yeah. So, and I've had people who are students who are bouncers, and they, but they have nowhere near that kind of incredible, bloody stupidity, mm. you know. And you know, it, it is a danger, and they, they, they purposely create violence because they love the idea. Yeah, yeah. Not because they needed to, because they had no other way, and that's the kind of people that used to be employed, and that I'm afraid, is. You know, with respect to Jeff Thompson, that was his day. That was his environment. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the way. That's the way they used to be. So they're not like that anymore. Bouncers. So don't turn around and say, "Oh, I've been a bouncer," because you can be a you know little petite girl and be a bouncer today. Hell yeah. You know. So. But that's you know, a, like you. You know. Whenever all these self-defense, uh, you know. You know, new styles and systems are invented. It's invariably yeah. the guy who started it. So I'm an ex-bouncer. I've had 20 years' experience on the doors. Yeah. This, that, I've and the other. Like, I've been uh, in the army. I've been in the army. Well, oh, you people they, have been in the army. James. Oh, they're frigging useless for the most part. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you know. Uh, but you know, uh, listen. What I mean by that is like, in terms of martial strategy, not. Yeah. And I don't mean warfare fighting because. No, no, yes, no. they do. You know what I mean. I'm talking about martial arts. Well, they got arts. the technology and this. Uh, there's their strategy. Strategy. Yeah. There's their tactics. Yeah. It's not. They, they, they're going to go everything but, they can to avoid hand to hand. Yeah, but I remember. I remember when I was um, when I was getting ready to leave that uh, we had a um, we had a new company sergeant major come in, big guy, big guy, and uh, he'd done some Brazilian jiu jitsu or whatever. Anyway, he got. Mm. He got his black belt or something. I, I mean, I don't know what the quality was like, but I just remember. I remember training with with a couple of guys. We were doing messing around with the judo and that, and I was showing them a bit of Lao. You know, we mainly just it was mainly kickboxing because they didn't have a clue about sort of timing and distance and stuff like that. But and uh, you know, and I remember uh, one of the guys I was training with telling me he says, you know, the sergeant major. I told him that you do martial arts still, and he said, he said still does martial arts this was the company sergeant major he couldn't fight for a fucking bag of chips and i was like jesus all right <laughs> because you know it, my demeanor is so sort of uh you know polite, polite. and stuff like that yeah. i get that and it's like yeah fine fair enough you know fine whatever yeah. you think that because his idea of martial arts was you have to be a big big you know tough guy and all yeah. the rest of it and i just like which completely on. defeats the object of martial arts it does yeah so it's like when i you know they're good at they're good at what they do but when it comes to martial arts invariably ex-army people army people or doormen they have a completely different psychology they have a completely different idea of what it is yeah you know uh, because they 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 rely on their uh their they're brawn their brawn yeah yeah and, and it's it's really not no, no, it isn't. And when you're older, and you can't use that exactly, anymore, yeah. what are you it's do? one of the most demeaning things and one of the most painful things to recognise. Age is one of the most painful things to recognise. 
when you you want to throw a kick and you pull your muscle <laughs> you try <laughs> you yeah. think oh crap i shouldn't have done that you know yeah so yeah. no it's uh, it's a weird one listen can we just finish off by i just want to talk a bit of syllabus now i know we've talked about syllabus i want to yeah. talk a bit about the syllabus can we talk about hand blocks three and four they're essentially the same thing um and uh, i just want to hear your thoughts on what you see people get wrong you know i don't want to go too deep into it because you can essentially say it's the same as one and two to a point it, but you know what well, what do you think steve yeah, again, once you've learned number one and two, which I said to you in another podcast, that I really believe that that is far more about the attacking yeah. and a lot harder to achieve yeah. uh, than number three and four. And so you learn it early because it's harder to do. So you've got longer to train it. Yeah. Uh, when you come to three and four and they're uh, inward attacks, not defences, the person is punching, you're you know striking at it's just above his elbow uh, you're trying to overextend his elbow yeah. um, when you throw the the block if you want to call it a block but we like to call it a counter offensive yeah okay so if you you create that technique where you're yes attacking the arm the uh, tricep and as you do so you're also pressing it into him it lifts his shoulder also makes it very much off balance if you can press it well into him as you're attacking him with a punch going forwards you know yeah. not stepping necessarily but just simply bringing your body forwards you you have a very good control so, of him so you, you this is uh, the, the the wipe um willow yeah, we, we call, call it, it willow palm willow waves yeah the willow uh, waves diagonal in the wind it's, you so you're basically Ooh. yeah you're wiping <laughs> it yeah. but the the idea is to catch is just above his elbow yeah. as he's punching in in so in, you need to yeah. move but right. but for anyone listening who isn't Lao guy you might in wing chun they might call it pack sow you know wipe yeah. across slapping block whatever it's not yeah. really but we can interpret it in many different ways yeah so you you just said there so obviously it's about the attack so we've talked about that in one let's it's just a, look it's at a counter offensive yeah let's and just I, look and, at counter offensive then yeah well we talked we talked about how the hand blocks are not necessarily useful in uh, the syllabus earlier, but if you think about them as countermeasures, then they become far more logical uh, and and less of a cumbersome, you know, repetitive movement that you feel may not work. Mm. But but in reality, if you perform them as offensive measures, for instance, someone's trying to do do a front kick to you, and you, in number five and six you press down, don't you? Yeah. We just uh, we just um, did a, a video, didn't we? With uh, yeah, I got a really I got a good point that uh, someone raised about that. Oh, a question about yeah. the name of something, but we'll we'll, we'll just just keep it on yeah. topic for now. But go on. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, we just did a reaction video or whatever with someone who said oh well i did it this is the way i taught i was taught but i do it this way in other words he puts his uh, hands over the one over the top of the other and presses sideways his elbows are sticking out which means he has absolutely no strength in that situation so when a kick comes it's just going to knock his hand straight out of the way um the other what we're literally doing is pressing with the palms striking at the first moving uh, element of the, the kick which is the knee so as yeah. the knee comes up you're striking at the thigh with the front hand covering with the yeah. rear hand which and remember the the kick will only come up as far as the knee so the more you knock the thigh down the more the lower the knee will go and the lower the kick will go yeah. so it'll never take it'll never develop into any kind of powerful blow because it has a very limited um, angle of trajectory yeah. it has a very limited um, movement yeah. because you're literally stopping it at its source right. so that's what that is for so when you turn that movement around and you do the same thing with the arm in number yeah. three yeah that's exactly what you're doing but you're just doing it with a single arm so you're wiping it yeah yeah and as, and you're striking it with the palm and as you strike it with the palm then you can control it and yeah. if you can get close enough to push his elbow oh, against you're, you're rustling chest. again because you're, you're doing sorry it. that's me i'm doing it yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm pushing the elbow against my, my own, you know, his body in effect. You're pushing his own arm against his body, straight across his body. Effectively, if you've got control of that tricep, yeah. 
and okay. bicep in so effect. let's just be, You'll be able to lift his shoulder and let's, push let's, him backwards and thump him let's be specific about what we're doing because i've seen this this hand block both three and four done where people pick up the punch uh on the wrist on the hand that's and, and the, yeah that's him. and well, also you asked me which was the worst part which yeah. the worst mistake that's the worst mistake right so we are categorically s suggesting that when you pick up this technique you're aiming to deflect at the elbow you're aiming to di yeah. redirect not uh, not directly the on the elbow that's going to hurt okay. okay it's got to be above the elbow the reason being that it's you uh, it, it, okay it may well work just slightly below the elbow but if it does he's got the possibility of bending that elbow and completely deflecting and you know but if you control the technique. elbow if you control the if elbow it's a second gate then can, you know yeah control the second gate control the above the elbow you're controlling the second and the third gate well you're controlling all the gates to be honest yeah, with yeah. you because because you just need to move your not, hand up to control the third yeah. Or, but, but, yeah. well you're 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 literally lift you can roll it and mm. lift it and as you lift it you're then controlling the third gate which is his shoulder yeah. now the thing is the first gate you don't even have to worry about yeah. because at that point now when you've got it and you're pressing him that fist becomes redundant yeah. so it doesn't make any difference but as i said if you block below the elbow mm. right and particularly at the wrist all he has to do even by accident is bend his arm yeah. when he bends his arm he ends up with an elbow first of all which may not reach you but it gives him the opportunity to then do a rolling punch oh. so we can do the elbow and a rolling well, punch and, you get and, you, uh, and yeah and get you twice yeah. you try to block him once before you can get yeah. that punch out he's bong sowed it in effect mm. he can bong sow it with the elbow yeah and then he can roll the fist so he, he can do a lot of things if you're going to block him wait for, and remember what's the fastest part of the, the that arm when it comes it's the fist it's going to be the hardest thing to to deflect yeah. the, the slowest part right and the first thing that's moving is the elbow yeah yeah Le the same as the knee right yeah so let's just imagine people trying to block a knife from the hand how how difficult is that going to be yeah trying to stop someone with a knife try by grabbing their wrist it's it's an extreme difficult thing to do yeah so so but, you know, but we can what we, you're doing. but in the context of the 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 attack in in hand blocks three and four mm. because of the nature of this it's a specific attack right i mean let's be fair it's, it's not just yeah. any old punch it's a specific attack now when we look at and this is what i'll say i'll make the um the, the the connection to to competition fighting right so for example the same movement in number three and four is is basically it's a parry isn't it yeah. when we look at competition fighting we acknowledge that sometimes the, the, the it's a last resort meaning that their their punch is so fast we can't intercept it above the wrist at the elbow we're having to intercept it at the very last minute really close to our face and yeah. divert that fist do you understand what i'm saying now yeah so we've but, got the science yeah. on one side yeah. and we've got as kind of a different interpretation of it because we're really dealing with a fast technique now no it's not about speed james because they can be the same speed what it's about is purpose now and also rules because okay. if if you're in self-defense you want to end the fight as quick as you can so you close the gap as quick yeah. as you can if you close the gap in a competition it's very easy for the referee to assume he's hit you right because he only has to touch you yeah with the hand okay right and that's including the other hand so if he if you get close enough for him to hit you with the other hand or to touch you with that hand whether you've blocked it or not the referee can you know sense mm. you know suggest it's a it's a technique that's scored so it's a totally different tactic you can't you can't utilize the same method of defense in a competition than you would in reality in reality he punches you immediately try to end that fight close that gap right close off his ability to continue to fight in effect throw the punch in his face in a competition you want to keep your yeah. distance for starters okay. well out of distance yeah. the punch comes you're just simply parrying it past you yeah. and then using the long range but of your hands what score i'm saying is i'm not saying that anything changes all i'm saying is because yeah. of the speed right say you're fighting an opponent who disguises his punch and it's a really really yeah. fast punch right yeah yeah you like will you acknowledge that you're not going to be able to block at the at, at, at the you know um uh, uh, elbow area triceps or yeah, whatever yeah you're gonna yeah. have to wait until it's 
because you don't see yeah. it, so it ends up yeah. being so close to your face as a parry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but does the, that the, fair or not? Well, the the point is that if you're in a competition, your range is going to be totally different anyway. Right. Your range okay. is going to be far longer, so you've got to wait for it to arrive. Okay? Right. Yeah. But but it does spent. It's spent when it gets to you. Yes. If yes. If, yes. If your distance is correct, yeah. then you can make it spent. Yeah. In other words, it's completely as long as it's going to go. Yeah. But in terms of um, self-defense you want to act as fast as you possibly yeah. can so, if yeah. you're standing much closer to the person which you will be in the hand locks yeah in in a reality situation you're going to be standing a little closer to you may not have the, the your choice that's why the self-defense you may not have the choice to stand close to him. he may yeah. be talking to you and then suddenly lifts his arms to throw the punch or to grab you it works with the grab. Mm. then automatically you bring your arm up take that elbow put it across his chest so he mm. can't use it and you've got the the shoulder in control you've got the hand in control yeah. and you got his face right in front of you mm. you can headbutt him if you want yeah. but the fact is that you've now got control of that arm but you have to act right so when first. we do when we do in the hand block then number three and four because that is <laughs> what we're talking about i'm sorry i went yeah. off on one then but yeah. when we're doing it we are obviously stepping back we're consolidating our position we talked about yeah. that before i like to talk about consolidation yeah. as opposed so, to stepping back now now yeah. a lot of people interpret i say a lot of people i've seen it when they interpret the the, the wiping motion as a side to side one so if you look at number three you're coming yeah. from the left to the right and it's like yeah. you're pushing something to your from left to right yeah can, can you comment on that yeah it's we they miss out the rotation and i'm not expecting the beginners to do it the way i'm describing it i'm expecting black sashes to do it the way i'm describing it that is to say that yes it, it rotates from the from the off so wherever it's coming from it's a wipe definitely but not just left to right as it rotates it's now going forwards so it's coming from left to right and rotating to go forwards mm. so it's a single rotation motion with a linear direction and a rotational direction which increases its energy which allows you then to create a strike and to continue that strike forward you're pushing in effect to make that strike become a you know a press yeah so effectively you what you're doing is stopping the person in his tracks imagine someone tries to throw a punch at you and all you're doing is put your your hand out against his shoulder and what happens to that punch it dissipates immediately yeah. that's what you're doing but you're doing it after the event yeah okay right. so you're rotating it and dissipating the punch you don't need to touch the punch you need to get it where it's in its source. Right. Well, the objective of self-defense is to stop the fight at its source, right. not to wait for the fight to pursue, yeah. uh, to ensue. Because if you're waiting for the fight to ensue, I mean, of course the fight has already started, so I'm not talking about you know, um, hitting them first. They actually instigated the movement and, and you're responding to the movement, yeah. okay? With a like-minded you know, attitude, you've got to win. So consequently, well, you've not got to uh, lose. Exactly. Well done. <laughs> so, round, yeah. rotate, okay. bang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, there's, there's very, there's very little gap in it either. Yeah. And of course, it doesn't have to be a normal punch because, of course, you can be poking them in the eyes, you mm. can be punching them in the throat, slap them around the ear roll. You do anything you want. But of course, as a as a beginner, when you learn, you're learning wipe on wipe off <laughs> and a punch and that's basically it yeah but it, it is totally different when it's put into perspective and when you get rid of those big abc yeah, and you start yeah. to think about the joined letters that's when you start to see the techniques start to work well, which is and this what is what i'm saying yeah, to people yeah. yeah this is what i'm saying to people stop bloody doing you wushu and start thinking about most basic techniques like that that yeah. will save your life yeah yeah yeah. well it is it is a very basic thing but yeah. my god you're going to use that as a counter measure defensive more the than the most any. basic oh, things great. are the things you're going to yeah. use but the only reason you're going to use them is because you've done them you've trained because them. you've yeah. practiced yeah. them yeah. yeah without that yeah go do you you, you wushu it looked brilliant i promise yeah. you it looked brilliant on the mat <laughs> won't look so good in a pub <laughs> um are you saying then in handbook number three are you saying are we actively pressing on the arm as we've deflected it struck it whatever you yeah. want to define it as are we actually yeah. continuing are we maintaining that touch that that 
tactile. Yeah, absolutely, so, yeah. Right, yeah. As he's we coming deliver, to you, remember. Yeah, yeah. He's, com I, he's coming to you. Yeah, so he's using yeah. the for his is forward motion, yours yeah. is consolidation. Yeah. You're, you're, you, you think you're stepping back, but in actual fact, you're just stepping into a fighting stance backwards, yeah. Yeah. right? That's not a step back. That is a consolidation of a stance from a normal standing position to a, a fighting position, yeah. okay? And it's in a reverse way. In other words, you're tactically withdrawing, yeah. but you're not withdrawing your weaponry. You're only withdrawing your body, your targets, Okay, you're protecting your, um, you know, your environment with the techniques that are well, still there. So as, the as, fact that you're yeah. stepping back, you know, we can look at the, the body as if it's like your, you know, it's all it's your ammunition dump. Mm -hmm. You're protecting it, your, your airfield, you're protecting everything, but your weaponry is still out there. Yeah. So as it comes up, people are going to look at this and go, what the what? bloody hell is he talking what? about? <laughs> So yeah, we're using our weaponry, being our hand to protect and strike. Yeah. Initially, that's that's the supposition that that we are going to protect ourselves and strike at the same time. But straight away, of course, we're using the other hand yeah. to to counter offensive. I think a lot of people, it, when they try and get too close with number three and four, like they've 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 wiped off, you know, yeah. wiped off. They've and they go to deliver the uh, the, uh, the counter punch. They end yeah. up because it's a flat punch. They end up just getting too close to that person, and their yeah. their fist ends up being cocked at an awkward angle because they're just too close for a flat punch. You know, yeah. so again, I think well, it doesn't have to be a flat punch. No, to no, enjoy. no. It it can, punch. Yes, it can be. But what I'm saying is, in the, if we look in the syllabus, right, yeah. which is what we're going yeah. by, it is a flat yeah. punch. So yeah. it, if you stick to the syllabus, then you're going to have to adjust your stance to make a flat punch work. Because most people are too bloody close for a flat punch. They might as well just That's do a right. straight punch, That's which right. will make gotta, you know. Yeah, I got to tell you, James, if you stick to Janet and Jane books, that's all you're ever going to learn this, and that's what we've we are about that absolutely but like yeah, you said so, you've got to have a syllabus you've got to learn to yeah. drive you've got to check well your that's yeah 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 that's janet and jane yeah uh, no sorry janet and jim janet and john janet I, and john i thought it was biff and chip <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So Janet and John, Janet and John did this. They went up the hill. They did this. They did that. They didn't do the other. But you know, maybe yeah. they should have done. Then it would have been two lessons in yeah. one. So yeah. the, the simple fact is that yeah. you have got to learn the most basic things, credible yeah. that that yeah. you know people will understand because they've been learning flat punch. So they'll do flat punch in those techniques. Okay, yeah. Yeah. but when they start to understand them like I say they can do a finger strike they can do a punch in the throat they can do a leopard spoil they can do anything they want so I'm not talking about I'm not talking to beginners because beginners will invariably do that all I'm saying is look beginners that's how it's going to work for you mm. as you develop it but you've got to practice it first yeah. now if you've practiced it enough you should be able to do it to make it work if you're a black sash why haven't you yeah yeah. That's that's it. Why haven't you made it work? Yeah. Why aren't you just going? Oh yeah, but this would work. And then don't expect the guy to s see. The thing is, I'm saying press the arm against him. Now, what w what happens when beginners learn a punch? They they step and punch. Then they leave the arm out. Yeah. How many times do we see that in a self defense demonstration? Mm -hmm. Loads where of times. The guy that yeah. is offering no resistance. Exactly, right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the, the the whole the whole point of my example is that there cannot be resistance not that he's not offering any but there cannot be because you're already on him you've already he's punched his punch has barely started yeah you've 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 rotated his elbow yeah. you're pressing it against him even if you hadn't slapped it you've rotated you've lifted it up because your hands come from below remember yeah. so as your hand comes from below it rotates presses it against him boom you've hit him twice right one you've locked his arm against him not necessarily a, sh a, sh a shoulder lock or a you know actual joint lock it's just a trap I'm saying you've, yeah. yeah it's you've trapped it against him and you've thrown a punch in his face or a poked in his eyes that is there is no resistance the, it's difficult for him to resist at that point well, in time well if he tries to pull his arm back he, if he, he was resisting back, he, he can't because you're already he can't. on it. yeah you're already going forward now yeah, his yeah. arms against him yeah. he's trapped that's yeah. the whole point of my my message yeah. make it work yeah. now don't stand there like a plunker with your fist out you know like a beginner forgive yeah. me beginners I'm, i I've, don't mean you, you to know. be you're not a, you're not stupid so you're being taught in the most basic way yeah so another and, uh, yeah cool sorry well i was just gonna say 
I've already explained that with the leg as well. With number six mm. kick block, number mm. five kick block, mm. the kick starts to come. You're attacking immediately. You see that leg move. Yeah. Bam! Straight on the leg. Okay. Yeah. Yes, he's going to think, oh, now I'm going to punch. But he wouldn't be punching at the same time because there's no logic in that. There's no energy in it. He would be kicking initially. Okay, if he's throwing a punch, then of course you don't block the bloody leg, do you? No. You're throwing. It, you're blocking the kick. The 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 punch, I should say. So. He goes to kick, you see his knee lift, bang, attack the knee, close in, you know, mm. you're consolidating your position, you're yeah. not going backwards, S go in with your weapons, that's your hands, yeah. strike the, the leg at source and finish it. Yeah, but you, you, you you'll use terms like go backwards. For, for ease of communication let's for, for communication with beginners step back on the right leg step there you back go. on the left so, leg yes <laughs> but but i would use for black sashes consolidate your fighting position yeah. from a standing position yeah. and that means sinking into it not necessarily stepping back another By thing nature you'll fall back slightly mm. another thing i see people do is they'll they'll pick up They'll pick up the punch. Uh, of course, it's a strike, but forgive how I'm explaining this. They'll pick it up and then they'll guide it down. They'll press it down to deliver a strike. Yeah, but if you press it down, you're giving the other hand an opportunity. Okay, but that's what I see. That's what I see people doing. Yeah. Yeah. So, what you want is you want that arm across him. Yeah. If you put that arm across him, it will. If his other hand's on his waist or down there somewhere, even if it's down by his mm. side, or it's in his pocket, about to grab a knife, yeah. that's where you're. That's why you're poking him in the eye. Yeah. Okay. Because if his hand is dis is not there, it's is down it, there somewhere you can't see it. You've got to finish him. Is it feasible then, within the realm of the, the the hand block itself, that as we pick it up, as we deflect, as we counter offensive, we can slightly take our body off at an angle, relative to him? to make it easier uh, you take his take his body off at an angle don't yes it's going yours. it's going off at an angle anyway yeah but yeah, what you're I'm saying is, can, instead yeah, of you just being sort of fixed as in for, moving forward on the spot at yeah. this point is there scope for you to maybe move around to the side a little bit or not you, you don't need to because okay. you're w yeah. what's happening is you're moving him around the side yeah. you're turning him by your shoulder right because yeah. you've got his arm so high you can now lift that arm pressing it against him yeah. that will either push him one way or the other depending on you know where you're actually yeah. you, you've consolidated your hold sure. and so you can either push him one way or you push him the other but either way you don't want to push him so far that, that it reduces the amount of energy coming from your fist or you're poking your eyes because yeah. if he's going backwards at that time mm -hmm. when you're striking the energy from your punch is going to be lower because yeah, yeah. yeah it's dissipated because he's going away from it yeah. so what you want is literally you want to be pressing him banging him at the same time yeah and so as, as you press him he's suddenly locked in a position trying to figure out a way out yeah he may try to step back when he realizes he's caught he may try to rotate those, those arm mm. or that arm okay if he's good at sticky hands or whatever then you go you over the top him yeah. around like that what's he going to do he's going to drop it down over yeah. the top or, or underneath yeah. He's going to make a big circle. Yeah. So, um, you know, and he may well be able to do it to your show, uh, arm. Yeah. And if you think about sticky hands, elbow to elbow, yeah, you're rotating elbow yeah. to elbow. Yeah. And, and so the, the one who can get the elbow trapped against the body is the winner. Yeah. Yeah. So you can understand where I'm, going, where yeah. I'm coming from. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. I'm right. not too technical for people. Well, it's, it's very difficult to explain the techniques, as we've always said on this podcast. But yeah. the, the, the worst thing is that you can say this sort of thing to beginners. They'll go back to their instructors and go, you told me to do it this way. And, and I'm saying, no, not for beginners. Beginners have the most basic principle of training and listen to your instructor. But what the instructor will do is go, well, it's not like that. But it's often because the instructors never tried it like that because they're still doing it like a beginner. So you've really got to make people understand, and this is my mission, is to try to make sure that instructors stop doing the bloody big ABC and start thinking about double writing for once. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then, as an instructor, you should understand how things can work. And once you've got confidence in that, you can build up a great self-defense repertoire and with barely movement, with barely any movement whatsoever. Yeah, So. Yeah. Your response is be, your your response is fast because your movements are small, right. not because you're quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Right. Well, listen, I think we're going to sort of, we'll, we'll finish there. I think on the next one, we'll talk about some kick blocks and uh, just work our way up to a uh, full kick block or uh, whatever, because we've kind of gone, okay. we've gone ahead on the hand blocks, haven't we? Um, th yeah. uh, guys, thank you so much uh, for listening to us. I hope we haven't uh, bored you uh, <laughs> senseless. I really don't. And uh, I'm sure we haven't. That was technical, that one. It was, it Well, was. we're either going to bore people with just chit chat about my history or yeah. we're going to, and, and, you know, me bitching. Yeah. Or we're going to bore people with technical stuff, um, but hopefully we'll get questions on either. Yeah, well, hey, <laughs> so I don't questions care. a question. Um, guys, thank you so much for listening to us. We really appreciate it. And as ever, if you saw any value in what we talked about today, uh, whatever, please, please go over to our Facebook, give us a like, subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, subscribe to us on Podbean or whatever. Um, we'd really appreciate that. We uh, we we just uh, we'd like to, to have some feedback from yourselves. Uh, obviously, you know, as, as as dirty as you want to make it, but you know, we will we will bite back if you uh, <laughs> if you want to be yeah. brutally honest with us. We don't mind. But guys, we we are like seriously be as honest as you want with us. Send us questions, whatever. You know, we'd we'd appreciate that. You know, yeah, um, I, I all, all we I'm ask, like... guys, is don't troll. If you're gonna troll, yeah. Then, then, I, then we'll come. We'll, we'll come. We'll come and get you like that. Because there's nothing worse than people who have not got a reason why they say the things. Like we don't mind your crap, but you know, if you don't include a why, then then we're really that really mm -hmm. sort of you know. Gets well, we had on an us. issue, didn't we, a couple of podcasts ago, yeah. where some we tried to explain how the bloody Abbott was. was yeah you know corrupt yeah and then and then we got moaned at because we got the wrong pagoda it's like what, what? difference <laughs> did it make about the pagoda exactly jesus so. it didn't have his name written on it and if it did it was in chinese i can't <laughs> read it but, but all i but, knew it was a modern bloody pagoda so yeah. when you're talking about an abbot who's been corrupt who's been accused yeah. of this accused of that and has businesses <laughs> in 40 different countries they're not even supposed to have their own uh, name as an abbot yeah Oh, and then yeah. and then someone comes back and says, "Oh, I think you've got the wrong pagoda." Yeah, there you go. That's shut up. Shut up, indeed. It's like Jesus. you missed the point. Exactly. Well, you know, people do miss the point. They can't see the forest for the trees. But you know, this yeah. is our no, point, guys. You know, but that's what makes it a trolling situation. Yeah, it's because they didn't listen. They wanted to just come across with some kind of information yeah. that they felt they were privy to that we weren't mm -hmm. and I got no problem with with people who've got more information than me most have to be honest with you <laughs> I, don't have any clue. I just uh. I don't do kung fu I just I just am <laughs> you know, because that's how I feel you yeah. know I, I don't I don't profess to be any master so bloody argue with me but if I make sense to you then at least appreciate it yeah. Don't don't troll and yeah. give me another reason. And don't hold back photos of him from uh, twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah, don't and don't show photos of my clubs and all the students in my clubs unless I'm in them. <laughs> because... <laughs> <laughs> oh god! And don't carry on the club name after I shall start, the guy yeah. who invented the name has yeah, left. My 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 fighting club, my fighting um, team in Scotland was called the Raptors, yeah, right? Just yeah. remember that. So people who were maintaining that name, after they, they, you know, left and give a load of bullshit about, you know, this, that and the other, and then, uh, and then they still try to call the, they try calling the same name, they're trying to call the, their, their team the same name, half the time they're trying to use the same style name, and uh, and then, but they don't want to put my name in there. <laughs> oh, <I don't laughs> give know. me a mention, guys! Give yeah. me a mention. Yeah, why not? You know, feed, feed the old man's ego. Yeah. Feed it. And if you it. have got something to say, because I really would like to know, you know, their intentions or, or or their, you know, what what actually led them to that. They are absolutely welcome to write to me and tell me why, because they never ever did. And every time I asked them, they went, "Well, you know, I don't know." Mm. So you know, no one ever did say anything they didn't, because they didn't. you know why because they had no friggin reason that's why <laughs> right. greed yes. greed was the only reason yes. I was bitching again for God's we are sake bitching go. and we gotta go we gotta go guys thanks ever so much for joining us we'll see you again on the next episode of the Kung Fu Podcast my name's James Still and I'm wishing you well and uh, this is uh, goodbye from me and goodbye from Steve yeah bye my name's Steve Newby yeah that's a Steve <laughs> Newby just remember it on the photographs <laughs> see you guys take care bye 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 <laughs>
I kick your little Beijing ass right now, man. I ain't scared of you. I know you know that little tricky shit. Come on. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining us on the Kung Fu Podcast. If you like that and you want to find out more about us, you can head over to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or YouTube and find us under SJN Martial Arts. And also guys, this podcast is available on Podbean and iTunes. So, until next time, take care of yourselves and we'll see you again on the Kung Fu Podcast. Why doesn't somebody pull off 45 and bang, settle it? No, no guns.